Look, if you think you can't grow your travel or hospitality business right now because times are tough or you don't have enough money or I am not a marketing expert, I am here to tell you, you are wrong. You've got to listen and watch this video interview with a small tour operator and lodge owner who has over 300 direct competitors who grew his business over 30% in less than eight months and you will be blown away with just how simple and easy it was. Watch this right now. Hey, good day, folks. It's Tourism Tim Warren here with another exciting and important episode of Tourism Marketing TV. This is part of my success series videos where we interview uh, top tourism professionals from around the world, especially people like Jimmy who are having awesome years. I got an email from uh, my friend Jimmy here, who we're going to meet in a second, who told me about his 30% increase in sales. And he's going to share with you uh, what he did, and you will be amazed how fast, simple, and easy it is, and that you could do this too, in spite of, even if you have a really, really competitive market. So a uh, good day, Jimmy. Hello. How you doing, Tim? Outstanding. So glad you can be here. So, Jimmy, if you could give people a little uh, bit of uh, brief background of uh, uh, your fishing lodge and your guiding business, and uh, so people have, have an understanding of the business sector that you're in. Okay. Well, we're in a really competitive business um, sector. We are in Alaska, and, and we're a fishing lodge. So, you know, if you, you just try and search for Alaska fishing lodges, and you, maybe you'll find us, you know. So... Um, the important thing is when people do find us, and I'm able to capture them, their attention because we got we've got a lot of competition. There's there's guides, you know, that we have competition with. Um, you know, you could have one boat, and you could be my competition. So um, we basically are, are we just take people fishing. We have a fishing lodge. We have a number of boats. We do river fishing. Our packages include um, fly-ins, river fishing, and saltwater fishing. And so we're, we're mainly targeting like salmon and halibut, but then we do trout and some rockfish. And um, but anyway, that's what we do in a nutshell. And it's it's really pretty simple. But uh, trying to communicate that we have something different than somebody else is is the game. You know, how do I do that? It it, it can be challenging, and uh, that's one of the reasons I was uh, particularly excited about uh, doing this uh, interview with you today because. You're in a very, very competitive marketplace, and, and and I'm just guessing. What do you think between Alaska and Canada in this in the in the going after salmon fishing? Do you think there's perhaps a thousand lodges oh, yeah. and guides? Yeah, there's a thousand at least. You know, we have 300 guides on our river. Oh my which, gosh! Which I actually, I mean, I there that's the boats, so I have six or seven of them. But um, still, you know, that's a that's competition just here. Yeah. You know? Wow. Yeah, it's it's, it's and that's not the rest of Alaska. Alaska is huge. Yeah, yeah, right. It could so it could be thousands, thousands yeah. of competitors, and you know, so you're a fishing guide and and you're a lodge. And, and I failed to introduce it's Jimmy Jack's uh, uh, lodge, and you're yeah, you're, lo we, you're located a, on the what the Kenai River. Yeah, we're on the Kenai. We're uh, we're on the Kenai River. Is our our main the kind of our home base, and um, that's what we've done for years. That's how I started out as just a, you know a guide on the Kenai. How long have you been in business, Jimmy? <clears throat> this will be 18 years. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Con congratulations. Yeah. What, um, so I want to give people just a, a kind of a, just a bit of a, of a snapshot. Um, how, how was the season in approximately 2010, 2011 in Alaska, but not only competition, but demand? And also you talk, we talked a little bit about um, there were some challenges in species, that there wasn't the yeah. counts weren't up and... And so you, yeah. had, you had some some issues that were making it challenging. Yeah, we, um, you know, 2010, 2011, well, 2010 was the first year we saw a lot of growth. And I, I, had, I had done some work on the website and I attributed it to that, um, made it more simple, you know, so people could see what we did. Um, you know, and we had 90% we had growth. And so we basically just completely changed. And then in 2011, we saw the same level, which was fine because I, I really didn't want to grow anymore because, you know, you, every time you grow, you have service issues, you, you know, and, and the service is, is the most important. So we have to make sure we're giving the service that we're selling or above that. So um, 
Then, you know, this year we have, we come into the season and I had done this, this change, which I consider a small change in advertising with a huge impact. And so I'd done this with you and I thought, well, you know, you're telling me love, you're going to see some, at least 20% growth. And I'm thinking, well, if we don't, that's okay. But if we do, that's great too. So we, we uh, come into the season and we're having some difficulty The you know, the, there's our, our Kenai River. King Salmon Fishery was a little weak, so we had some restrictions on both runs, and so that basically um, caused some issues as far as, you know, the phone stops ringing in the, from your day charter market, and um, so, you know, I see it as we could have grown even more, but at the same time, we, our, our issue was we just had so many people to service, you know, that, and here one of our fisheries is being restricted. And that was the issue, you know, so what do we do? How do we keep them happy? And so we have gotten more fisheries in the area, so not a problem. We put them more on halibut, fly-ins, um, trout fishing, you know, and do different types of other salmon. We have sockeye salmon and, that we can fall back on. And um, <clears throat> So in spite of that, you know, I see that we could have, if it had been a normal year, we probably would have seen even more growth. Wow, wow. And, and that's what blew me away because I, I realized, you know, man, I mean, what if the phone would have kept ringing? You know, because what we had was what we already had booked, you know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, <clears throat> and, and I had to put somebody in my office. I knew that uh, right away um, just from the two previous summers. The summers get so busy, you know, the phone rings all the time. So I had a, uh, a gal named Lisa really helping me out. She did a great job, and she she was able to, um, you know, help me deal with the, the growth as well as the, you know, when you have growth, you're, you don't just like take all these people in, in our business, you take them in and then, you know, on a fly-in, for example, that's a subcontract. So we got to put them on the subcontract. Somebody's got to do all that work. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, so it's, it's not like you just take everybody and they all show up and you just go, thanks for your money. You know I mean? Yeah. Now yeah. it's showtime, right? Yeah, that definitely. That's, that's one, mm -hmm. one of the good cha challenges of uh, having a big bump in sales is, is the operational yeah. thing. I want to give people some perspective real quick so they understand when we talk about 30% increase in sales, we're talking a substantial increase in logistics because it, we're talking about a substantial increase in sales and revenues. You have um, 10 uh, rooms in your in your lodge, yeah. and you run 12 boats. And your and your and your your season is what from June to September. Mid? Uh, it's mid May through the, through the end of September. Yeah. So, so it's a very short window. So a lot happens. So that, you know you're doing a, a a pretty substantial volume to keep that all that going and you know there's a lot of places around the world jimmy that are kind of like that where they're they got one or you know a, a lodge of that size and they've got they've got about that same sort of volume this is in the independent tourism uh, operator world that's that's a, a pretty typical size whether you've got a, a lodge in thailand or you're in africa lodge or a fishing lodge so it, it's it, it keeps you hopping yeah yeah it does and and you know we were at um, we added a cabin before the season, um, and we added two of those boats. Oh well, no, I'm sorry. We actually added, um, we actually added two boats before the season. So we went from eight to ten, and then added a cabin up to ten rooms. <clears throat> because I just, you know, I, I I knew where we were at with the numbers of people that were coming. Then after the towards the end of the season, now I've added a. A saltwater boat, which kind of captures that subcontract market that we were we were pushing money to, and then another sightseeing boat, which just kind of uh, I just wanted to break into sightseeing a little bit. I wanted mm -hmm. something that was a little different, um, just to get to to learn. I wanted to learn about that part of the uh, of Alaska tourism, and uh, it's completely different, you know, than fishing. So there's a lot to learn, but there's also not that performance element. So we actually went from eight boats to twelve boats from the you know the spring till now. Wow. And added that cabin, and um, you know, so you know, our, our real is, our real issue is, you know, well, depending on how much we book, I would I would like to see us book the same amount as as last year, um, you know, and then in the shoulder season just pull a little bit more, which we probably will. But you know, the yeah, the the growth was big because we were already I consider pretty big, so thirty percent was huge. I mean, that completely. I mean, it's like the the thirty percent that we grew is like what we used to be back in two thousand four. Like the entire yeah. size revenue was 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's exciting. I've I've, I've seen that before. I want I want to back up for a second, and, and because I I don't think people really I, I don't saw just how simple uh, these what you did to increase yeah. your sales thirty percent. You talked about the website, but um, when did you? I believe you first met me or been reading my newsletter or getting my stuff maybe a, a year or a couple well maybe a couple years couple ago, years. but but yeah, you got you got ago. my course. And uh, back in 2011, and and really, you, I asked you what you know what what did you attribute to those sales? And you said it was just I just improved my website, per your suggestions. I, what you said in the email is I just did what you told me to do, Tim, and yeah, wow, yeah. our sales went up 30 percent. So yeah. was were those things that I told you, and which you got mostly from the course, and so I think we did a mastermind call together as part of the course, were they were they really difficult? Or did that cost a lot of money? Did that take a lot of time? No, you know that um, it doesn't cost any any real money. I mean, you, you're depending on who you, who does your website, you know, but you're, I mean, for what it is, when, you, when I first got it, I saw the PDF, and I'm kind of more of a reader, I'm real... Like and and I couldn't really load the videos because our internet's a little slower here in Alaska where we're located and so I just I just looked at, and then I asked you is it, are the videos just more of the same is the PDF the main you said yeah the PDF is the is the course so I I just read the PDF I made the little one third page you know thing you told me to make it was a third of a page I still have it that's the document I look at it's posted over here you know and. And then, he, and then when I go to make a marketing change, like I made an ad change yesterday on a print ad. I have one print ad, and I added those credibility statements in that ad this year. Awesome. So, you know, that's all I did. I mean, I was and I was thinking, well, if it doesn't work, I didn't waste any of, really, any of my time. I waste about an hour of my time brainstorming. And then I did, it did take time to get the web page updated, because that's your, you know, that top part of your web page, and it's got to be up there, and it's got to, Somebody's got to do that because I don't do that. And so that took time waiting for that to get built. And then putting them in the emails was just kind of learning how your email program worked, and then it was done. I mean, it probably took me, you know, realistically, my time, it took me, a, you know, a day. And so I'm thinking, I don't care. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I, You know, I mean, the good thing about it is I felt really good about it because, you know what, I realized, you know, I had enough experience and enough credibility in the business because I've been doing it so long um, and I think anybody has some kind of credibility, uh, whether you're in a first-year business or a 20-year business, because you are you, mm -hmm. you know. And you, you know, most people, if, if even if you're 25 years old, you've done something in your life, you know, you can put down. And so I, I put it out there, and I thought this is going to be good because at least now people know who I who I am. Because what I what I didn't like is when I did do the sales myself, people would call and they're wanting me to like. Okay, give me references. You know, God, I hated that. You know, why give you references? I, mean, I don't have time to give you, send you references. You want a book or not? I mean, I'm, <laughs> I, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, we're Jimmy Jack fishing, and and then you know the problem is though he's like, what's that? You know, and yeah. that's what that's what we, you know. So here I am. I'm I'm in in my mind. I know who we are. What we do. You know, we have one of the things that we do is we have really uh, modern. And clean boats. I mean, we have the. You get on our boats, and you're like, that's the Cadillac of the river, mm -hmm. you know. And if you're sitting in a boat next to ours, you will recognize that our boats are better than your boat. Mm -hmm. And and you know, it's a big deal because we invest a lot of money and a lot of time taking care of the boats. And um, I've always liked having nice boats and and nice gear and and so. But but you know, we weren't communicating that. And so, so how do you communicate that? They can't, you know, they see a picture of the boat, but they can't really tell. And all you have to just kind of tell them, look, hey, we have the most modern and safe boats. Well, people like that. And, you know, so just just getting it out there so I didn't have to explain it on the phone. People were pre-sold to who we were. So let's save a lot of time in sales. And that's why I was able to put somebody else in my office instead of me. Because now they don't need to know everything about they need to know who we are, but then I can communicate to my salesperson, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And they look at the five points and they go, that's who we are. And I go, just tell them that. Mm -hmm. So it's a message and it never changed. And so I think it was just, it was silly easy. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, to me, I was just like, man, what? 
has Tim been hiding this, or how do you figure this? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, it's well, that's it's it's so funny to hear you talk about it because I've heard similar sort of uh, language from other people that wow, I can't believe how easy it was. And, and what we're talking about, folks, we're talking about, this is basic psychology. When a travel, it, people are shopping, you know, you've got so much competition. They're looking at all kinds of other um, fishing options. And they're, they're trying to, the consumers are trying to figure out, do I go with this guy, this guy, this gal? What do I do? And so we're talking about reinforcing the, the credibility that you have as an operator. And you're right, Jimmy, no matter how long you've been in business, you can, you've got your professional experience, you've got your personal experience, you've got your collective team experience that speaks to your credibility and this this helps a travel shopper decide choose you over the the other guy and it's really important and it happens really fast and so not only did your sales go right up just from some simple changes in your website marketing language and you did it to your email but you just shared something that I've heard before too is your time spent selling went down your, your, yeah. your, your conversions went little, up, and how much time that you had to spend <coughs> went, went down. So yeah, you, got, you, you basically, what I noticed is that people were, you know, three to five emails, and they were, and they were um, just more of contact, and in one phone call, and you pretty much, that's all you can do, because they, they knew who, who we were, and man, that was, um, that was really nice, because then, any, you know, Lisa could do it very easily and and all of a sudden she's booking stuff and she was on commission she's real excited and I'm like yeah well <laughs> yeah it's easy huh she's like golly this is easy people just you know booking and I'm like well they yeah they should and but that was different than you know say five years ago for yeah. sure yeah and, and yeah. it's unfortunate too many people are in the, using the, kind of the old style and they're always trying to have to reinvent the wheel and trying to convince someone that boy we're the good best choice and this and that when we can let our website do our selling for us and more importantly as you've learned getting our clients to do our selling for us and, and use that credibility so that when they call they're they're much more convinced that wow this, these guys are really good choice they, they, they've got what I want and I feel comfortable giving my money to you versus I don't know about these other people so it, it, it is huge and uh, so would you, do you know, when speaking to other uh, tourism professionals out there that are, that are a lot like you, you know, would you recommend um, that uh, what the information you found in my course, that this is, you know, potentially could really help their business too? Yeah, you know, I would say, um, you know, for, I mean, I was shocked, you know, when I first, well, first I, you know, I knew about you from, I was looking for help, um, you know, in fixing my, Overall, you know, internet marketing, and actually, I hired a different company, and they kind of did it all, and did not really, didn't really do what they said they were going to do, um, and and so I, I right when I fired them, I was like, you know what, I'm I've been getting your emails, and I go, I'm going to call Tim and talk to this guy because, you know, obviously you are focused on tourism marketing and not just general marketing, which which really. I figure would make a, a little bit of a difference. So anyway, yeah, you know, <clears throat> then then I was kind of shocked, you're like with your prices so so little because I had ta I've done other coaching programs before for business, you know, in, in real estate and and then in also in business in general. And that well, you know, I, I virtually can't lose because I'm sure that you know for the price that you're you're offering, uh, I'm probably going to learn something, you know, based on. Based on how much I spend on advertising, I probably should do this, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, and then you know when you send when you send the PDF and I read through it and, and your message is very clear. Look, let's let's get this in a nutshell. Um, and once I got it down, you know, I I typed up my little one third page nutshell of who we are, what we do, and our credibility. And I thought, man, that that's um, it's so smart because, you know, really. <clears throat> it's the same as it's the same as you driving down the street and looking at signs. You know, you see, um, you know, you, you have another level which is branding, where you see the golden arch M, and you immediately know what that means. Whereas before they'd have the M with McDonald's, and and they would put how many billion burgers sold, mm -hmm. right? You know, and so in doing your thing, I thought about the McDonald's. I always like to look at McDonald's because they're they're a very successful business. I thought McDonald's did that too. You know, before they branded themselves very well, they did that. 
they put you know whatever billion burgers sold, and I thought mm-hmm. there it is. I said this is the same thing. Yeah. And you and then you, you drive by another burger joint, which you don't even see the sign because it's off to the side at a right angle, and you're driving. Mm-hmm. So they invest the. You do have to invest the time. You also have to invest the money to put your sign out there, and and, and bigger's better, you know. And and it's kind of like I was like, wow, this is let's just try, it, you know. So, but you know, it was so simple. It was so simple. Tim, it was like. I did it, you know. I I did. I literally read your PDF and did that in like two hours. Mm-hmm. I was done. Now it's just like, how do I get this on my marketing material? That was it. Mm-hmm. You know, I. So I mean, in, in in literally like a couple hours, I had my little nutshell of of mm-hmm. what I was going to put on everything. It was easy. I mean, it was like, and if somebody's going to you know spend uh, five or ten or thirty thousand dollars in advertising for their business, well, you better spend a couple hours and brainstorm. And you know what I, one thing I think the biggest thing I've realized is that it's really, you have to have, you have to make time to think about, you know what I mean? You take, you have to, you can't just throw money at something. You got to think for at least a couple hours. I think that's where, what you've done is you created a a way to help us think like, okay, Mm -hmm. let's, let's think about this. You know, whereas if I was sitting here by myself, I'd be kind of, you know, lost and God, what do I do, you know, and what do I do and and what do I, in this avenue, what do I do, I do print or do yeah. I do all this stuff. And really it's, no, sit down, let's let's brainstorm and think for just a couple hours and get it right and then let's put it somewhere. It, it's a challenge that so many independent tourism professionals have around the globe is that we're, we're small to medium-sized businesses and we're all trying to wear all the hats and it's it's hard to yeah. to, to have an outside opinion and so i i, I created the, the course to give guidance for thinking of thought now i don't remember did you participate in one of the mastermind calls that i did where we were looking at websites and, and, and previewing those I I, you know i i i couldn't be on that call but um i you guys did you looked at my website and i and That's right. i listened That's to right. what some other professionals said and i and I took notes on that um, video. That's that you, right. Yeah, so you guys did it for me. I wasn't there, but it was great because I was able to look, or I was able to listen to what they saw that I didn't see, and and I did all those changes. They, there was like, you know, four or five small changes, um, you know, and I just did them. I'm like, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be... I'm not going to be stupid and go, ah, oh, well, you know, these guys don't know. You know what? Just do it because what do you, what do you get to lose? Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I did those those small changes and wow. it was all based around, you know, your, uh, you know, just your little nutshell of what to do. Mm-hmm. Well, the, for, for people who don't know what we're talking about, these, uh, we, I, I, we ran that some mastermind calls where people were only people who were members of this Tourism Marketing Success course. And what we did is we had some people volunteer their sites to for all these other people who've all studied the same stuff that you have studied, Jimmy. And then notice what did they see based on the uh, instruction that they felt could make the improvement. And it's really powerful to get other people yeah. who are on the same wavelength who are also all tourism professionals going, oh, yeah, this looks good. This looks good. But, you know, I noticed that this could be here and this could be here. And um I'm looking forward to doing more of those because they're they're that way we, you don't have to figure it out all by yourself and you get right. drilled truly the, the the power of the, the collective um, mastermind is, is is more than you know one person working yeah. towards a common goal so it really really works um, you know uh, we're gonna need to wrap it up here pretty soon but I wanted to give people um, an opportunity to go uh, uh, look at your website and if they're interested in going uh, fishing, which I have done, not with you, but it's certainly in Alaska. And it is, a, it is an awesome experience. Um, yeah. And Alaska is incredible. Um, yeah. How, what's your web address, uh, Jimmy, and uh, how can they get a hold of you? Okay, well, we're at uh, jimmyjackfishing.com. Um, you know, basically, if you Google Jimmy Jack and fishing in Alaska, you'll, you'll find us. And, um, you know, just I just say go to the website. We've got a contact form there on every page, at the top of every page. It's real simple. Fill it out. Uh, or get us a call on the 800 number, and you'll talk to myself or, or, or Lisa, probably myself, in the fall. And, um, you know, it's great. It's good to book in the fall because you will probably talk to me. Um, and, uh, of course, I'm going to be in Mexico, but I'll call you back. 
<laughs> See, I'm going to go to Mexico for a month and go fishing. There you go. See, that's that's at the end of the day, you know, it's really about quality of life that we deliver. But it's all. But we as tourism professionals, when we do our job well and when things work better, not only yeah. sales go up, but, you know, money goes up and it gives you more options. Uh, yeah. So that you can go to spend more time doing what you love, spend more time with your family and you yeah. know, help your community, help your church, whatever. Yeah. When we sell more, we have these options. And, and so I, I just am so grateful for you, Jimmy, for uh, being a member of the course and for sharing today with uh, other uh, viewers and other tourism professionals, you know, what your experience was. And I hope and I and, and encouraging them to uh, to, um, you know, jump in and, and make these changes, invest a little bit, and, and uh, so that they can start seeing some improvements too. Yeah, you know, and I, you know, if I was to say one thing, I'd just say, you know, I really encourage other tourism professionals to just, you know, get your PDF, take two hours out of one day and just focus on that. Get your, get your stuff written down on a piece of paper, just one piece of paper, and you're done. Just do it. And then, Put that on your wall, and then anytime somebody says, "Hey, you want to buy a print ad, or we'll create it for you," well, don't don't really let them create it for you. You tell them what is going to be on it, and make sure that it's right. You know, make sure that it's right. Don't you know? If you have to revise it, you know, fifty times, do it, but make sure that that thing's right. That's you know, that's one thing I'd say is you know, but it doesn't take that much time. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a building block for marketing communication when you when you work that worksheet from the course. Uh, that's exactly what I designed it to do. Um, in your email, you said that, uh, that you know this has been great. You've, it's helped me a lot. I look forward to getting more coaching from you. Well, guess what, Jimmy? I, I've got I've, later on. I've, I've got some more goodies for you, and some of the things that were in the videos um, that you haven't implemented that you're going to really like that will help even more. Yeah. Um, and I've got some other stuff for you. But um, I really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I look forward to hearing. Um, of your continuing adventures and see what, how you um, continue to grow your business dream uh, moving into 2013. Yeah, no, I'm excited. You know, we added that salt boat and, um, you know, I, I just, I appreciate your help. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful that you do what you do because, uh, I, yeah, it's kind of like a, we got to have coaching, you know, if we, if we, if we don't have coaching, we're going to be that athlete. Yeah, you know, ever, uh, I've been an athlete, you know, for all my life and, now, if you don't have a, a good coach, you know, somebody's going to beat you all the time. you you got to have a good coach to win. You really do. Well, that's yeah. wise advice, and, and the top performers always do, because it, the difference between first place and second place is usually about that much. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so you have to be a top it. performer. It's nice to have that uh, that extra. So you don't have to do it alone. No, no, and I don't think anybody's gone to the Olympics without a coach. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, I look forward to, to being your coach. I'm gonna. We're gonna sign off now, but stay on the line, okay. and uh, all right. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll chat a little bit. Thanks so much, Jimmy. All right. Thanks, Tim.